everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about sets. If this is your first time to my channel, thanks for coming. If you're returning, I really appreciate you coming back. Let me know what you find interesting. And uh, if you enjoy it, please subscribe to the channel. Sets. Well, what is a set? And set, we're talking about mathematical set. What is a mathematical set? Well, a mathematical set is a collection of objects that can be clearly identified. And there's some things that we generally do to make everyone know that we have a set or we're talking about a set. One of those things is that we use these curly brackets. The curly brackets denote a set and we list all of the elements um, inside separated by commas. When we do this, when we have all these elements listed separated by commas, we call that the roster method. And the three dots that you often see for example, down here, there that's called an ellipsis. And that means that the list contains uh, values beyond what is written. And it continues, sometimes forever. So for an example, we have a set. We, see, we know it's a set because we have the curly brackets. And inside the set, we have one, two, three, four, five. And then it, we have the ellipsis, which means it keeps going on from there forever in this case. So that would be the set of counting numbers. A lot of times when we are dealing with sets, we'll use set builder notation. And we use set builder notation when the set is so big, maybe sometimes it's infinite, and we can't write all of them down. So we use a different way to, to describe this set. We still use the curly brackets, as you see on the end here. But we write this stuff on the inside a little bit different. We have a variable, and often it's just x. So the x, which just means any number, belongs to this set. And that number that we're saying that belongs to the set, we're representing by x. So any number, say x, such that this vertical bar right here means such that. And then there's a condition. So really what they're telling you is they're giving you a way to identify whether a number is in the set or not. And they're saying that number, take that number, which say is X and apply this condition to it. If the condition's true, the number's in the set. If the condition's false, it's not in the set. Our condition here that I just made up is uh, any number that is an integer and is between zero and four. So what would this set look like? Here we can write it out. What would this set look, set look like if we wrote it out? Well, it must be an integer, and it must be between 0 and 4, bigger than 0, but less than 4. So that leaves us with 1, 2, and 3, and that's it. Because 0 is not in the set because it's equal to 0, not bigger than. And 4 can't be in the set either because the numbers in our set have to be less than 4. So there we go. There's the answer of all the x values that are integers and between 0 and 4. Let's talk about set intersection. Set intersection is where you, it's an operation you do on sets. You find their intersection. We find or we, we write the intersection operator kind of like an upside down U or kind of like an N maybe. So the intersection of sets A and B, which we would write A intersect B or A and then this, this upside down U and then B, it's the set of all elements that are common to both A and B. So if A is the set 1, 2, 3, and B is the set 2, 3, 6, then A intersect B, or in other words, we're going to find everything that, every value that's in both A and B. So if we're looking, is 1 in both A and B? 1 is in A, but it's not in B. How about 2? 2 is in A, 2 is also in B, sweet. So that means it's listed in our set. 
How about three? Three is in A, three is in B. Awesome, it's listed in our set. And that's all for A, but B has a six. Six is not in A, so we can't list it in our A intersection B. If we wanted to write it in set built-in rotation, we would say A intersect B is any value, say X, such that X is an element of A and X is an element of B, meaning X is in A and X also is in B. And if you're just wondering what this little E looking thing, that is called an epsilon. It's a Greek letter. And it means an element of. It's just kind of mathematical shorthand. If we looked at this from a Venn diagram, it's kind of visual. I kind of like visuals. A would be the set in the blue. So A is this set there, and B is the pink or the red set. Some things, so the blue area, highlighted blue area, so area one is only in A, but not in B. Area two is in both areas, and area three is only in B, but not in A. So A intersect B would be what they have in common, so it would be the area two, or the yellow area. Let's talk about set union. Set union is another operation. You take the union or find the union of two sets. And the union of two sets, say set A and set B, and we write it, A, which is a set, the name of the set, and then union symbol, which is looks kind of like a U, and B, so A union B, it's the set of all elements that are in either A or in B. So we combine them. Everything that's in A and everything that's in B, we put it all into one set. We don't need to list repeated values. We just list them once. So if we were looking at set builder notation, we would have A union B is any number such that that number is in A and that number is also in B. If we look back at our same example, we have one, so we put one in the set. We have two and we have three. We put those in our set. If we look at B, we have two, it's already listed. We have three, it's already listed, and we have six. That's a new one. So all of the possible things that are in both sets, one, two, three, and six, that's what A union B is. And if we look at our Venn diagram again, then our union would be, A union B would be everything, the blue, the yellow, and the pink. Hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear what you thought. Leave a comment. Give me a like. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.